So I want to start with this map of Black and Beach. Basically, it's a plan view. This is our world headquarters building. And um, so nothing special about the plan view. But what we did here is I started uh, creating these icons. So basically, I created this camera icon to let people know that, hey, there's a picture here. And within this PDF, I can now, thanks to the addition of 360 photos, I can now attach this 360 photo to this camera, and anyone can now look around Black and Beach, see what does it look like when you're standing at that exact spot. Um, I'll go ahead and close that. You can pop around the building, find out, okay, we're coming to the front entrance. What does the front entrance of Black and Beach look? We go ahead and click the, the uh, capture icon. There we go, you can see our front door, security desk, nice big flat panel TV and lots of light, right? So the idea, the way that we've been using it at um, Black and Beach is to go and take site photos. So we, we go out to a site where we have a, it's an exterior plan view of a, of a site. And we go out before the building is even constructed when we're in talks. And we start capturing these 360 photos so we create this plan that everyone can see and has these photos so that everyone can look at what it is. So even though we can only have the money to send one, maybe two, maybe in some lucky cases three people to the site, we start capturing a site with these 360 photos and it becomes a really easy way for people to get a feel for what it looks like, get a feel for the terrain, how many trees, how flat is it, are there hills, lakes, you know, what exists at the site. So we've been using it to, uh, come on in. Uh, there's pizza at the back, you're welcome to help yourself. We've been using it to do that, and I just uh, created this floor plan here because it's something I can share. They were, I, I used to work on the government side, so all the examples I have are classified, so I can share those with you. So I just shared one from Black and Beach. Um, so now, I just want to quick show you how we did this. So this is with a pretty simple camera. It's a Rico Theta camera. Um, this is a about a year old. There's a new model out now. But uh, this one costs about $300, so it's pretty inexpensive as far as technology goes. Um, with the Rico Theta, it's pretty simple. You can just control it with your iPhone or your Android phone. Um, give me one second. So Rico emits a Wi-Fi network itself. I uh, jump on that with my iPhone open the Theta app, and now I have full control of that camera. So from anywhere, as long as I'm within the range of the Wi-Fi, so I can go hide outside the room so I'm not in the picture. Um, but I also get this uh, view where I can see the whole room, scroll around it, so I can see all of you in real time. The uh, camera will do images or videos, but to take an image, it's a simple you know, snap the button. You might have heard it uh, capture there. Give it one second and it will store that image in the camera and we're back to the uh, home screen, okay? So you can take 360 photos as simple as that. Once you're done with that, you can get the photo off your phone if you want, but for this purpose, it's pretty much easier to get it off of the um, data. So I'm gonna go ahead and just plug this guy in to my computer. So we see the data, the folder, folder. We'll be looking for the most recent one. Sorry, the uh, projector kind of shrunk my screen here a little bit. So it looks like this one is the most recent, the 221. So this would be our 360 uh, image. And if I would open that with the Windows viewer, it would be pretty much a disaster, right? It doesn't look, it's not uh, rendered correctly. So you can see the whole picture, but it has flattened the picture. So it's not uh, reading it as a 360 image with the window viewer. But if you want to add it to your Bluebeam drawings, it's very, very simple. Um, you can use an existing markup or uh, create your own markup. So I'm just going to create a rectangle for the moment. And 
using the capture tool. If you haven't used the capture tool, um, it's a simple right click from a markup. So you right click, you get this capture option. You can see from camera or from file. If I would pick from camera, it's going to be using the webcam and you'll get a, a great image of my face here in a second. Or you won't. Uh, this is my work PC, so I, I, it's probably something to do with that. I apologize. It does work from a iPad, from a, my Mac, it works very well. But uh, we'll go ahead and pick some file to show you what I really want to show you. Um, go down here to the repo. I think it was that very last file. <coughs> This one. Give that one second, and you see that little camera icon pop up, and we're all done. So at this point, um, Bluebeam recognizes that this is a 360 photo, not just a regular photo, so it will let you, uh, you know, browse around and look around. Uh, really quite cool. Uh, just in case you didn't know, Capture can also um, capture flat images. So if I go to my pictures, and let's see. I'm going to uh, show my true band geekness here and uh, pick a Cornhusker uh, marching band photo. And we'll see that now that has been added to this. Maybe. There we go. Added to this capture. So uh, you can have more than one photo, more than one image to each markup. So I click over, you can see the whole image there. I can just go ahead and go back. Uh, lovely thing, you can add more photos right from this window. If you click the plus sign, uh, you can capture them from your camera right from this window. But you can also, this is a great feature, you can export all of the photos, all the images, or just the one you're looking at. So when you want to actually get that photo out, like you send this file to someone and they don't care about the file, they just want the one photo, you can click on that uh, button right down here and then just either export all or export current and then they have the actual photo uh, file instead of the whole PDF. So, one last thing I want to share about this is that you can, when you export, lots of you use that markup report, so you have all these markups in the bottom and you export the report. These captured images just get little thumbnails on those uh, markups. So when the markup for that rectangle that I created shows up in the list, we'll see a bunch of thumbnail images that are the captured images. So whoever you're sending the report to will be able to see all the images in there. So we found this to be a great way to store images of sites. Um, we do it with lots of other things too, but sites is where we mostly use the 360. So. That's how it's done. Um, I'm going to let Steve take it away and talk about the technology, different kinds of 360 cameras, different qualities, and all that. And thank you, Steve. Jason, just yeah, just a second. Sorry. With, <laughs> with regard to sharing that with with others, I'm, I'm guessing that the, <coughs> the file structure is is going to be important in terms of. I'm, I'm seeing this as probably some kind of hyperlink situation, and that you need to maintain that 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 file relationship, or am I totally wrong? Are you talking about, so I have created yeah. the hyperlinks here. And then and those are about photos. Not, yeah, not for the photo, but what I do want to point out is I have two PDFs here. So you can pay attention to the size. You can see what has happened when I added all those 360 photos. Like the normal size was about 700 um, kilobytes. So they actually reside within your PDF. Right, right. So when you send a PDF to someone with these photos captured in it, it's basically attaching it to the PDF. So you're going to end up with a much bigger file size, but it's going to be stored in that PDF, no hyperlink. So okay. anybody else? The yes, full sir. picture or just a thumbnail? The full picture is stored there. Yeah. There is actually some optimization and kind of file reduction that happens. So it's not it's not as if you send a full image file itself. Excellent. Um, it's so not the full picture. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's, it's totally fine. I mean, it, it is, it's not just a thumbnail, so it's kind of somewhere in between, I guess. So it's trying to make it a little bit easier to send out. Perfect. Thanks, Jay. Yeah. So if you were to run uh, reduce file size on this file, would it reduce the file size of the image that's in your capture media? Usually that's just yeah. co image content that's on the sheet. That's a really good question. Is generally, if you do that with a with a you know a photo, <coughs> photo that you've drawn on there to annotate, 
Yeah. It, the quality goes down. I'm not sure if that same thing happens here. But. Yeah, I don't know the answer. Greg shook his head. He doesn't know the answer either. So, I don't, I don't um, think it would affect the image size for the capture media, but um, I'm not certain at all. So um, we, we can, can, we can take we'll write that picture. down, and we will, Jason will get back to it. So for anybody who doesn't know, he's talking about there's a uh, reduced file size function within Bluebeam that will go through, breathe through the whole file, and it finds all these images that are raster and reduces the size of them so that you can actually have a PDF that you can work with that's not big and clunky and hard to send people. Um, the question was, does that apply to the captures too? And it seems that no one knows. So we'll find out. But there was another question. Yeah, um, so what if the file you send to someone that don't have Bluebeam, can they view it through Adobe? No, 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 this okay. is a Bluebeam only. This is just yeah. a Bluebeam only. Okay. Yeah, just this is a, that's a good time to get them to sign up for Bluebeam, right? <laughs> okay, so if you send me that file and I don't have Bluebeam, you can, my computer is going to see. Yeah, so that's a cool file. What do I do? So, uh, so for anybody who doesn't know, like any KCDR or anybody who just doesn't know, Bluebeam View is a free viewer. So it's like Adobe Reader. You can download Bluebeam View for free, and that will let you do these pictures. So there's no cost as long as your IT department doesn't prevent you from downloading that, or another reason doesn't prevent you from downloading it. But but yeah, you, you only need the viewer to be able to see the photos. You can't add photos to it with the viewer, but you can uh, view them for sure. Uh, thanks to Bluebeam for the pizza. These guys brought that for us. Yeah, so anybody yeah. who walked in late, Angela yeah. and uh, Greg are back there. Greg is back there. Angela's up here. But they're from Bluebeam. They flew in from Chicago today to come to our meeting. So uh, introduce yourselves. And um, the last thing for the Bluebeam user group, if you have topics you want to cover, uh, let me know. I can. I have a lot of people in the area that I know. So if we have a topic and I know someone's doing it, I'm happy to like try to get them to come to the meeting and present. So just let me know what it is. Um, otherwise. Check out the hardware. If you want to see the 360 on Bluebeam, I'm happy to show it up here. You can come check it out. Uh, yeah. So.